to make uh, a large carved carp. You see the smaller one I've made years ago, this is a small koi carp, but in this case I've been asked to use these photographs to make uh, a king mirror carp and uh, the various photographs have what they want um, from the top, from the fin or from the body or from the scales. Um, the previous one was made in piranha pine, so we're going to use pine again, but this time just ordinary white pine. And to try and get something of this size uh, means building up in blocks of wood. Now I was going to build up in 4x4 four four and 9x1, uh, but it would have taken a lot more expense to do that and a lot of work. And I managed to find some of these big sleepers. These have been pressure coated. The uh, coat hasn't gone in very thickly and I'm going to plane all of this off. So I've cut my lengths to two one metre lengths, then use my electric planer to plane off the surfaces of this. Um, we've then glued the two edges together. And that is now in the sash clamps and the glue is gluing up overnight. One clamp each side to keep it level and glue it nice and tight together. So that will need to glue right until tomorrow now to make sure it's really strong. I'm going to use the electric chainsaw which I've already used for um, cutting off these lengths. Electric chainsaw is a very useful tool because uh, it's quite versatile and it hasn't got the smell and the petrol and the noise and I can rough up the uh, whole carp with this first and do all the basic shaping and then come down with the surf forms and the carving tools and refine it at the end. You can see here that the uh, stain isn't that deep and once we start working into this that lovely figuring will come up and hopefully we can use the knots as part of the uh, design as well but our carp has to fit in within this shape so quite a lot of wood to remove you see we have to look at the actual drawing and uh, carving from the profile and from the top and so I've drawn out these shapes copied directly from the photographs onto the computer worked out my sizes and so on for the timber and then Again, drawn it onto the actual block of wood from the side, and I'm going to carve. Uh, I'm going to cut that shape out first with a chainsaw, and then I will go from the top and cut uh, the uh, shape down from the top the other way around. So we've got just the basic um, profile of the fish both ways, and then we just have to round it off basically.
we have the rough outline of the uh, profile of the fish. But I'd like a little bit more thin just on top here. So I'm going to add a little piece of the wood we've just cut off. So it's exactly the same wood, same colouring on top here. And use the same clamps again just to clamp it on. It's going to be a weak point so we'll have to be careful with it. And we'll use one of the sash clamps just to clamp it on there. And then we've got to leave that to dry a while. Tie it them down so the glue all squeezes out nicely and we'll let that dry completely overnight this time. And then tomorrow we shall start cutting down the other direction. So we've made a nice shape, now we want to cut down that way to get the shape of the fish from the top. Well we're back and the gluing's been done. It should stay on alright now. Seems to have dried up well. So we'll take the sash clamp out of the way. And now I've marked up the top here where I'm going to slice down the fin just to the body and then I've got to carefully take away down to that fin and round the tail and round off the head shape from the top and then we start to round off the whole body. So away we go. First of all we'll just take down the top of that fin in this piece here which I'm hoping is going to be alright, it'd be rather nice in the figuring, but it's going to be a devil to carve. Let's see how we go. It would have been nicer in some ways to build these fins out, but as we're not doing the carp as thick as it would be, it would normally be twice as thick as this. That would mean twice the amount of wood and so on, and for this client I don't really think they want a massive piece of sculpture on the mantelpiece. It's more to look at from the side than the front or above, and that's where the effect we're going to get is going to come. So in this case I want to be taking these fins 
put a slight angle here just to give the illusion of uh, the depth. Here's my picture of fins. There we are. We must be looking at these fins, how they work. Although I am tempted to glue some bits of wood on the side here, I must admit. Um, I may do that as an extra because it really would be nice to have those fins sticking out there. So we may cut some wood now. I'll just cut these to a basic shape. We may well cut some more wood to go on there. And that would mean that these would lose a V shape out of here. And these are going to be the same. They're going to have a V shape out of there. Do that now before we glue the others on. I do think it would be nice to have a couple of pieces of wood put onto here so that these fins can, can come out more of an angle. Right, we've cut these fins to size. And that's simply a matter of gluing them on there. And uh, to do that, we're going to use a G clamp, which hopefully will hold it in place until they're nice and firmly glued on. That's better. Yeah. We'll leave that to dry for a good long while. We should be able to shape those fins. It's worth taking that little bit of extra time to give something a bit more special and get the right angles. Well, the G clamps have held that together and it's all dried off now. So it's time to be looking at how to shape this up. Change over to this much larger version of a jigsaw now and just see if I can shape up these fins with this. basic carp shape is there. A um, bit of rounding off to do here and there. The fins are, delineate, are, are delineated. We're now going to start working on the gill areas and the mouth. Next is to drill in the hole for the mouth here. Done. Change the drill bits now to this one, which uh, should enable me. This one, which should enable me to do a bit of roughing up. And as you see, I'm also able to do quite a bit of uh, shaping up with this tool. a lot of work we can do with this. Now we have the barbels coming over down the mouth here that fall down and along this bit here. 
So I want to try and start to form those now, right at the front edge of the lip here, coming down and across there. What I'm going to do here is take some dowel rod and drill into there and allow then the barbels to come out here. It should be rather fun. Take these bits of dowel rod and sharpen them off to make the barbels. And they should now fit neatly into there. Looking a bit like fangs, but <clears throat> I'm sure when it's all done it'll be fine. into there, not them in too far. Same this side. Push that up in. And there we are, we've got the barbels. You can see they look quite effective there. And we'll trim all those in and sand them in later. So after we're just continuing to uh, <coughs> round it off shape it up. I'll put a slightly different tool on now for doing that. More rounded. Um, yeah. So we've got just behind the eye and then we've got down to the gill here. I'll cut right in. shape coming pretty quickly now. Well, you can see the mouth area has taken shape and we've formed the main gill plate and the cheek. Now I'm just working out where the eye is going. Just here and of course one of the most important things about that is getting to exactly the same the other side. So I have to make sure that these two are absolutely in line and at the same height as well, otherwise it's going to look silly later. Let's have a look, one finger each side, and it seems to be about right there. What we're going to do is cut in around here and then down to it and around them off. We'll actually have to start doing some proper carving shortly. the head basically formed. We've got the barbels, we've got the lip, we've got the eye, we've got the gills. All it needs is now refining. So we're going to start working on the lip.
well on the way now. Almost got one side roughed up. Now we have to work on the other side. elevation is about there. I've got to clean a bit off the sides yet. Now we've got to start working across the bottom here again. <laughs> we've got the basic carving done. You can see the veins and all the fins and the shaping of the belly and so on. This fish won't be obviously as thick and heavy as a real carp because uh, if it's going to be a wall piece or a mantle piece then uh, it would be far too wide to do that so it's more like a bream in thickness but we've got the volume and form and three-dimensional qualities of it. Right here we are then with the piece now ready to go ahead and you can see the details that we have got on this work from the tail to the fins to the head as I come closer, you can see the barbels that I've carved in the mouth. Just need to be cleaned up, trimmed up, and then we can start looking at the actual scales on the fish. So we'll do the final shaping now, and the fine work on the scales and so on, the chisels the gouges. <coughs> I was using an ordinary gouge there, now I'm going to go to a V-gouge just to get right in around this gill. careful with the fins now. About there. Now it's a matter of detail. Just sanding first in a moment. I'll have some nostrils just before the eye here. So we'll just um, find those as well. We want to do the same the other side. Of course. Next we have these scales to do along the top of the fish here, so I've got to work those out because they did want the markings very similar to uh, this particular carp that I suspect that the uh, client has caught. We're not going to make it exact, that wouldn't be what this is about, but certainly uh, pretty close. And I've got to try and reproduce something similar on the other side. To do that I'll go back to my gouge again because it's already the sort of curve that we want and just tap down around the shape of these scales first of all. Not too deep, just deep enough to give a nice of shape to them. And then with the chisel that's just, with the gouge that's just off flat you can come back in the opposite side of those 
just into them. Which when it's sanded out will give the feel of the mirror cap. Each and every one has to be cut out individually. The rough carving of the scales, and the thing is about ready for sanding. So we'll get the sander out, and we'll have a go at these scales and smooth everything down. Now we just fill in a little bit of the cracks here and there, and uh, we'll let that dry before doing any more. Well here we are with the piece almost finished. What you see I've done now, I've used some of these uh, FW acrylic inks, which are rather useful, to stain it with. I've, I've put a uh, primary coat, a very thin down coat of uh, sealant on first of all so it didn't all just soak straight through. And then um, colour washed on a blue, a little bit of purple, some yellow and then some red to give the colours of the carp, uh, both sides. And then gone back again and sanded it on, on the top scales to give the golden effect that the scales have as well. So you can see it's quite effective now. And uh, I've just got to give it a coat of um, acrylic uh, varnish and then I shall polish it and we'll give it a satin look.